Muchas gracias, Professor Molina, for your presentation. We really appreciate it. And now let me introduce next speaker, who is Dr. Brian Sanders from University of Sao Paulo, Brazil. Welcome. Okay, uh, hello, good afternoon, good morning, good evening, whichever it is. My name is Brian Saunders. I'm a re re researcher at the University of Sao Paulo, and I am delighted to be here to present our recent paper looking at uh, timing of, of creatine supplementation around exercise, a real concern. This was led by one of my students, Felipe Ribeiro, with the contribution of uh, many of our colleagues. Uh, just an initial perceived conflict of interest. We have previously, as a group, um, received uh, supplements free of charge from Altschem to perform research on creatine supplementation, but they never ever have any um, direct input on any of the research that I've done, and we publish regardless of um, results. Uh, this is slightly uh, uh, quite important to me. Uh, back in 2010 to 12 years ago, the Creighton Conference in um, Cambridge in the UK was the very first scientific conference that I ever attended. So uh, 12 years later, I'm delighted to have been invited to talk. And at that conference was the first time that I also met uh, one of my supervisors and mentors, Professor Roger Harris. Um, now, being a Creighton Conference uh, makes my life easier that um, you know, there will have been many presentations before mine, so I don't think I need to get into any of the initial details. But I'll just bring you back to this initial study, um, you know, seminal study from Roger, in which not only did he show that creatine supplementation could increase uh, creatine content of the muscle, but also that increases appear to be greater when um, individuals were exercising. So some individuals uh, exercised one leg and rested the other throughout supplementation, and increases appear to be greater um, in those um, in the exercising muscle. And this was even more obvious when total creatine content was um, ratioed to the ATP content. And this is uh, generally considered to be fact that individuals who exercise do seem to get greater. Uh, increases in muscle carnosine, uh, creatine content with supplementation. More recently, or at least in the last uh, decade, I suppose, individuals have um, suggested that maybe timing of creatine around exercise might be of importance. Okay. And what might that be? Well, you have certain groups who are saying that you need to supplement pre-exercise and some individuals saying that you need to supplement post-exercise and that th this will um, generate greater or smaller benefits um, with supplementation. Um, now, if we think about this, if we think about um, creatine timing around exercise, well, why might this be important? We need to think of what is potential physiological mechanism at play here. Well, there's two things to think about, I think. Uh, one would be could there be a quicker increase in creatine content? And is that sufficient to induce greater uh, improvements in exercise performance or exercise gains? Um, and likewise, is there a greater increase if we supplement pre or post exercise? And is that sufficient um, to generate uh, greater gains? Now, if you think about the typical loading period of 20 grams per day, we know that that kind of saturates uh, muscle content in about five to seven days. Now, if we then adapt our strategy to pre or post, you know, if one of them is better, you know, would actually speeding this process up make any difference? I don't know. Would and would this, you know, potentially generate greater increases again in total creatine content? And would this elicit greater performance gains? Now, maybe if we think about a longer duration supplement, uh, supplementation protocols such as five to eight grams per day, which takes longer to saturate. Maybe here you might think that maybe speeding this process up, uh, whether it be pre or post supplement uh, exercise supplementation, if one of those does speed the process up, would that then generate um, greater performance gains? And again, we need to think, would this actually generate greater total increases 
in uh, creating content. Now, obviously, there is some uh, physiological rationale as to why timing around exercise might make a difference if we, you know, we have two main mechanisms of action. Uh, the one is exercise-induced hyperemia, so an increased blood delivery to the muscle, which is required during exercise, therefore providing more creatine to the muscle and increasing the total creatine content. And we also have a sodium potassium pump activity, which um, is increased um, during uh, muscle contraction, and this can increase the uptake of creatine into muscle. Um, there thereby potentially increasing total creatine content. But if we think about duration of which, you know, these are elevated during and following exercise, um, and also thinking about um, supplementation and the time it takes to increase, uh, reach peak, and, and thereafter decrease in the blood with creatine, Maybe pre-exercise supplementation might be optimal because then you're coinciding optimal or, or the greatest amount of creatine in the blood with increased delivery of, um, of blood to the muscle, increased sodium potassium pump activity, and therefore delivery into the muscle. Um, we also have to remember that there is a chronic upregulation of sodium potassium pump activity, which might actually explain why um, increased, you have an increased uh, creatine um, gains with uh, in an exercising muscle. But here we're talking specifically about the timing and the time at which uh, you might see the greatest benefits. But rather than me sit here and mumble and ramble and um, speculate, well, what does the science actually say? And to date, there's only four studies that have um, really investigated whether timing of supplementation around exercise really matters. And the first was performed by Jose Antonio and his colleague, in which they recruited 19 healthy recreational male bodybuilders to train for five days per week um, for four weeks. And one group supplemented pre-exercise with five grams of creatine monohydrate and the other group supplemented post-exercise. And on the two non-training days, creatine was just taken at participant convenience. And they measured uh, one repetition max of bench press and also body composition as outcome measures. So what happened? Well, almost all these measures were improved uh, following uh, supplementation and following training. However, for body weight, for fat, um, fat mass, for percentage body fat, and for one rep max, there were no differences between groups. Only fat-free mass um, seemed to be uh, improved to a greater extent in the post-supplementation group compared to the pre-supplementation group. So the first minor little bit of evidence that perhaps there's something going on here. Now looking at uh, the next study, uh, 22 healthy adults were recruited by Darren Kando's group. Uh, they were underwent 12 weeks of whole body resistance training, three days a week. Again, you had one group taking supplements pre-exercise uh, pre and the other taking it post-exercise. And on this occasion, it was around 0.1 grams per kilogram of body mass, which equates to about sort of seven to eight grams for these individuals. Uh, I believe um, that on the non-training days, no supplements were actually ingested. And as outcome measures, one repetition max of the leg and chest press and also body position. And if we look at the outcomes, we can see here change in lean tissue mass, change in leg press strength and change in chest press strength. And it's quite clear to see that these are all increased following training and supplementation. However, there were no differences between groups. So in this study, there was absolutely no difference um, between taking creatine pre or post exercise. So we move on and the next study again by the same group. In, uh, this time they recruited 39 older adults 
and they put them through 32 weeks of whole body resistance training. Uh, this time they also included a placebo group, um, but you can see here we had the pre and the post exercise supplementation groups again with that same 0.1 gram per kilo, kilo of body mass um, dose of creatine monohydrate. Leg and chest press, body composition again were the main outcome measures. So what did they show? Well, you can clearly see here that in change in chest uh, press strength was increased in both groups um, compared to placebo with no difference between supplementation groups. Change in leg press strength was improved compared to just training with placebo with no difference between groups. However, here we can see that the improvements or the increases in lean tissue mass uh, were not different between placebo and supplementing with creatine before exercise. However, supplementing with creatine after exercise, that group did have significantly greater uh, gains in lean tissue mass compared to placebo. So again, another tick of the box for, uh, for gains in um, fat-free mass it, uh, with supplementation of creatine post-exercise. Finally, the most up-to-date study or the most recent study in which uh, 10 recreationally active participants actually performed a within subject design of eight weeks of training. So everybody performed both the pre and the post supplementation um, design. So a really interesting design in which on one day, individuals would train one side of the body and supplement pre um, exercise. And on the other days, they would uh, train the other side of the body and supplement post exercise. Okay, and again, we have our strength and muscle thickness as outcome measures. So what happened, we can hear clearly here in terms of one repetition max, strength of the elbow flexor and the knee extensor increased with um, from pre to post with no differences between groups. What about muscle thickness? Increased with training and supplementation in both groups, but with no difference between them. Okay, so pretty much what we've been seeing is that creatin supplementation or, or timing around exercise doesn't seem to make much difference. Now, we have to uh, bear in mind that there's always certain limitations when it comes to studies. And I think the main study, uh, the main limitation, unfortunately, is that none of these studies actually measured muscle creatin content. I think Again, there has to be a physiological reason as to why supplementation timing um, might make a difference, but without knowing if it actually influenced muscle creatine content, then I think we're still a few steps away from really um, suggesting whether or not it, it, it is of importance because it has to uh, physiologically be relevant prior to actually then influencing exercise performance, in my opinion. Um, there's only a few studies, obviously, and they're in wildly different populations. So two elderly populations, one resistance trained, one healthy. So I think we, you know, it, we need some larger sample sizes to detect potentially minor differences that timing of supplementation might make. And then we also have to remember, are any of these differences, if there are any, clinically relevant? Maybe for an elderly population, it might be but for a younger population, maybe less. Certainly we need to think about uh, making more measurements um, and look at potential mechanisms of why timing of supplementation might be important. So a few limitations of the studies going on, some suggestions potentially for future work. Um, but as it stands, I think we conclude that timing of creatine in relation to exercise does not modify the benefits of resistance training on strength outcomes. No, none of the studies have shown this. Timing of creatine in relation to excess may modify the benefits of resistance training on lean body mass. Two or four studies showed something, but even then, I think right now, there's nothing to suggest that it really is that important. So I, I would suggest that as it stands, timing 
creatine supplementation according to exercise um, is not supported by solid evidence. So for me, just take creatine when you want during the day at the recommended doses and you're likely to gain benefits. If you want to read in more detail, I uh, push you towards our article. And I would like to finish this presentation by um, saying how upset I was to um, hear that uh, Professor Jacques Portman's passed away recently. He was one of the pioneers of creatine research in the area. Uh, if you are a fan of creatine and the creatine research, for sure you will have read some of his work. So rest in peace, Jacques, and um, fantastic career and life that you've had. Thank you very much. As always, if anybody would like to get in touch, please do via the means here on the screen. Thank you.